Hey y'all, Ron here. Hope everyone's doing well. well. It's kind of a overcast day. Sunshine for a minute and then it started raining again. It's been raining at night, you know. But can't complain of the rain. I think they said Missouri's drought uh, measurements are down, over. We're not in a drought anymore, so that's good. So as I was sitting here uh, getting ready for this video, I look out because I have windows here and then I have a window over here. And I have bird feeders, one that fell, that I've got to fix tomorrow. And then the other one is actually, I don't know why, my husband put it onto the fence. Well, the squirrels can get up there really easy. So um, anyway, I look out there, there's a squirrel. Okay, well, I put a hummingbird feeder up there and he has that thing tipped over and he's drinking the hummingbird water, the sugar water. I ran him off three times and then finally I went out and took it down. Okay, so I wanted to show you some beautiful things that I picked up from um, Ecstasy Crafts, uh, Lisa Horton stuff. I'm going to go ahead and show you this, and then I have um, something to tell you at the end. Um, so I thought, well, so the ones that want to see this and then don't want to hear my wobbling, um, then can, can skip all that. It's um, something pretty serious. So um, anyway, so let me show you what I got from Lisa. Let me grab this, too. Hang on. Okay. Well, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love Lisa. Lisa Horton, she is just a craft angel. She is phenomenal. She is the sweetest person. She is the funniest person ever. I was privileged to, um, to meet her at Creativation and uh, stay in touch with her, and I look forward to seeing her again. She's just phenomenal. Um, so anyway, this is Hyacinth's. And this is an embossing folder and a die. And it actually has some stencils that goes with it. And I thought I picked them up, but I didn't. And um, so I actually went back and ordered them. So you'll have your um, embossing folder, your stencil, and then your die, which I think is pretty cool. And one of the reasons I got this is because AJ loves hyacinths. And then that's the first thing that my daughter smelled um, when she came home from the hospital after she was born. Um, she was a little jaundice and... Um, and it was cool. It was in March. And so mom had her all wrapped up, but she went and sat on the front porch with her. And uh, so her little face could get some sun. And uh, anyway, hyacinths were all over the place. And so she picked those. And so she was waving them in front of um, Gracie's face. And so that's what she she was smelling. Oh, the squirrel's back and he's not finding the, um, <laughs> the hummingbird feeder. He's going to find it because I put it over on the porch. Anyway, he's going to find it, I'm sure, in a minute. All right. Um, this is Gears. Just because I love gears. And this is 3D. And then pipe work. And then this is waves and bubbles. Really cool. <laughs> okay. I'm laughing because he came back and he's looking and he was looking over on the deck for the uh, <laughs> hummingbird feeder. So I was telling AJ to go clap her hands and shoo him away for a minute. Oh my goodness, the varmints. Uh, okay, waves and bubbles. So this is a six by six uh, embossing folder. And then it has layering uh, stencils. And it has, does it say one, two, three, four, five, six layering stencils. So I just think that's gonna be really cool. And depending on what colors you use, that's gonna be phenomenal. And I'm thinking some of the interference ink, I'm thinking some of the pastes. Anyway, that could, it could just be endless with the colors. Mm -mm -mm. And then if you know, you know, <gasps> Proud Peacocks. This is gorgeous. So it has an, um, a matching die, it has the embossing folder, has the matching die, and it has the stencils. Um, and how many coordinates? Oh my gosh, this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stencils. Wow. You know, I can't wait to dig into that. That's gonna be just scrumptious. And then we have a non-slip ink pad holder. So this is for her. Do I have any here? Handy, let me see. Um, that's Lisa. So this is for her ink pads. So you will actually stick them on one side and it kind of, you saw a little lip there and then you can uh, take the lid off and put it over here and that way when you go to 
ink it up, you know, your brush or your whatever you're using. It, you're not having to hold it or chase it down. So anyway, I wanted to give those a try. And then I just thought this was beautiful. This is Leafy Flourish. And so this is a six by six and it also comes with a die. I like that. Lisa's just mm, not, I, you don't see many of these at all with the embossing folder and the die. And then it has stencils, layering stencils. And it has one, two, three, four, five. So again, the different colors you could use. Oh my goodness. And then I just thought this was super cool. This is musical. I mean, so headphones, um, electric guitar, um, piano keys, speakers. I mean, just gorgeous. And then it has matching uh, embossing, um, matching uh, layering stencils. And there's a lot to this one too. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like ten layering stencils. So that's going to be gorgeous. And then this, um, this is for the hot foil plates. And this is a big one. Does it say what size? It doesn't say what size. Let's see. Because this is what you use when... Oh, see, this is nice size. This looks like an A2 size. Um, where's my ruler? My good ruler that I can see. Um, okay, let me see, let me see. So this is um, just a little over four. I mean, just a little over four by almost six. Um, so when you do your hot foil and you know how you cut your, ah, your piece of foil, and it has your design on there. So you run it through and everything. And then when you peel that off, you have the negative space but you still have all this beautiful foil and then that design. So what you do is you use this and you can take that piece that you would normally throw away and um, heat set it on a card. And sometimes those actually, those are prettier than the actual design. So anyway, I like this because it's, it's bigger. I have, um, I think a couple from Spellbinders, but they're a lot smaller. So I was excited about that. And then this is something new. This is called Color Explosion. Let's open this up. So these are the little powders. And does it say Color Explosion? Okay, here's Magical Black. Silver Surprise. Apple Green. And Chestnut Brown. So um, what you do is you take your paper, preferably paper that will hold water, you know, like a, um, a watercolor paper. You can use it on regular cardstock. You're not going to get the same effect. But um, if you use, I like to use a thin watercolor paper. And um, anyway, you can wet the paper just a little bit, just a real light mist, and then just barely tap a little bit of this on there, and then it'll help it stick and it'll immediately start moving and explosion, exploding, and then you add a little more water and then the color starts just really dancing. Really cool stuff. Um, or you can put it on dry paper and then wet it, but I mean, it's just barely a little tap because when you do that, you know, it's like you really don't see much at all. And then when you add that water, it just, it's an explosion of color. So I wanted to give hers a try. And then this is new. This is, get this out of the way. This is Pearl Flash Pastes. I'll say that three times. Let's see what we have here. Well, that's good. They have a seal on there. I need a sharp object here. Ooh, I can already tell. Oh my, let's see, let me grab a little something here. Hang on, okay. This was just a, um, this is actually a black watercolor paper that, ooh, that I've been trying a few things on. Get a napkin here. So really pretty. Let's see what this does. Hmm, that's gorgeous. And let's see, I have a white one here. So it's just the, can you see the, 
gives it just a little hint of color. So this will be gorgeous on those balloons, just to give it a little shimmer. And then you can see, see it on here, it really, that's black. Of course it's on black, but you can kind of see. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -mm -mm. So we'll, we'll um, kind of swatch those and use them and see what we can come up with. Put that back on there. And when you have any kind of paste or anything like this, you can always use, um, if you're worried about them making a mess here. Where's my water stuff? Um, you can get a little uh, piece of uh, that press and seal. Um, what's it called? Um, it's called press and seal. Like, oh, it just comes off the water. Um, like plastic wrap. But anyway, and put your little piece over that and then screw it back on. So I got, let's see, this is, where did I see? This is Sapphire Pearl, Lavender Pearl, of course, uh, Gold, and Emerald. So you kind of see the colors there on the side. So this is going to be fun. Fun, fun. Mm, look at that. And it dries pretty fast. I just got it on there pretty thick. Pretty, pretty. All right. So that's just a quick little little share. And then I'm going to do a little share with you. Um, let me give you something pretty to look at. Um, I'm going to kind of keep this short and sweet as much as I can. Um, and some of you may already know. Um, this is Sunday, so a week ago today. Um, I took my husband to the emergency room and um, come to find out he had a heart attack. So, well, this is the part, if you don't want to hear this, you can just go ahead and stop it and then go on to your next video. Um, he didn't have a moment of grabbing, you know, grabbing his chest going, oh my God, I'm having a heart attack. When we went in and we started doing testing and everything, they found out his heart was enlarged and we kept doing more testing, you know, from the lab work to ultrasounds to x-rays um, to CT scan and, you know, just kept doing more and more. And then they went in uh, with the cath um, up his arm and, you know, the artery and then um, fill the heart, um, all the arteries and veins and everything full of dye. And that's when they found the blockage. Um, so let me back up. Again, he didn't have any grabbing his chest, oh my gosh, pain. He had been complaining for about a week of upset stomach and uh, reflux. And, he, you know, he just said, I need some um, anti-acids. I need this. Okay, okay. And we'd been, you know, eating out a little more than we should have, you know, because I've been busy and this and that. So I thought, well, it may be, you know, the grease. It may be, I don't know, the spices, whatever. So then it was like Friday or Saturday. I'm like, hey, what's what's going on? Because he's like, I need some Pepto. I need some Pepto. And I'm like, you don't need to be taking Pepto. So um, anyway, he said, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. And so he was telling me his symptoms, which he just didn't feel good. His stomach was a little distended. Um, you know, the reflux, acid reflux was really bad. And um, all that. And I said, Keith, that's, that's not your belly. You know, I've been around long enough in this business. That's not your belly. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. So he took, I mean, he was drinking Pepto like, you know, like a fish. And so I'm like, no, we, we need to go somewhere. No, 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 it's getting better. Then Sunday morning, he woke up and he's like, I don't feel good. And my joints ache. I just don't feel good. All right, let's go to urgent care. No, because I hate urgent care. I mean, if you have to go, you have to go. But I said, we're going to the ER. This is not your belly. So we go to the ER and, and he did have a little shortness of breath on exertion and just, you know, just really feeling bad, a little tightness in his chest, but he thought it was the reflux. So we go in, they immediately start in all the tests and just, you know, more tests, more tests, more tests. And there's a heart enzyme called troponin and that lets you know if there's heart damage, heart attack. That's one of the kind of telltale signs. Normal is five and below and his was 15,000. So they knew it was his heart and the testing they were doing showed an enlarged heart. Well, I really thought it was myocarditis, myocarditis or pericarditis, which is, you know, you have an infection and it causes the, the heart or the lining of the heart to swell. So I really thought that's what it was. And then the doctor came in and said he wanted to do the, um, um, the scope um, or the, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. Um, go up the artery, light his heart up and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, he said, I really, you know, I said, okay. 
So, I mean, Keith is conscious. I mean, all that stuff. So they did it um, actually on Monday and come to find out he had a blockage on one side, complete and total blockage. Said that the uh, veins and capillaries and everything were already growing, trying to fix itself. So, I mean, the body is a wonderful, wonderful um, thing. And it tries to take care of itself. And it was already taking care of itself. Well, that was another sign that it had happened about two weeks ago. We're thinking that when uh, we had the FFA banquet and I catered that and he was helping me carry in a few things that evening out of the car. And I mean, it, nothing heavy, nothing like that, but a few trips back and forth to the car. And it wasn't very far, kind of your typical from the driveway to the inside to the kitchen. And he made a couple of trips and I mean, he was huffing and puffing and broke out in a sweat and just had to go sit down. It was like he ran a marathon and just wasn't recovering. And he was just really, well, he's out of shape, terribly out of shape. And so he kind of does that anyway. So I didn't think a whole lot of it because he wasn't complaining that much. He just said, oh, I got to sit down. I got to sit down and, you know, drink some water. Okay. So we actually think that that's when it happened. He wasn't having severe chest pain or anything like that. Um, I mean, he did have some tightness and some shorter breath, but, you know, thought it's because he's out of shape. So they said since it had happened weeks ago, two weeks ago, I guess it's been three weeks ago now, um, that studies show it would do more harm than good to go in and try to fix it now than, than compared to when it, if it had just happened. If I would have brought him in and said, hey, he's having chest pain, short of breath, they would have taken him in right then and either cracked him open or, you know, went up through his arm or his groin and put in a stent or, you know, did something. But... So that's where we are. So he was in the hospital uh, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday we got to come home, had him on blood thinners. He's on Plavix now, changed a little bit of his medicine around. Very healthy person, other than being out of shape. Um, his whole life, he didn't take medicine other than a Tylenol occasionally until he had kidney failure, which, another story, quickly, he got an infection in his foot. He has neuropathy, so he couldn't feel it. He's not a diabetic. Um... And then, so they put him on an antibiotic, and he ended up having a reaction to the antibiotic. And then the infection in his kidneys uh, went to his kidneys. Anyway, with the combination of those two, um, his kidneys were shutting down. So I took him to the ER uh, and admitted him straight into ICU. He was there for a week. That was like five years ago. So up until that time, he never took any medicine. But because of all that, he ended up on... Um, with hypertension, um, they put him on a cholesterol medicine and a couple other things. So, um, anyway, other than that, he just has few medicine that he's on and, and that's all. No real history in the family except for his mom, um, had a little blockage. She's 90, 95, 96 years old and still going very strong. Um, and about five years ago, she had, um, an incident where she had a little blockage. But other than that, his dad, um, aunts, uncles, cousins, everybody's healthy. So anyway, so of course we have uh, follow-up appointments with doctors. We're going to start cardiac rehab pretty soon. And, um, that's where we are. So he's getting around better. And of course he's weak from being in bed for those three days and then all the tests. And of course no rest because they were in there every hour, every 30 minutes taking vitals and, and checking him out and all that. Um, so he was really glad to get home and rest. And so that's what he's been doing is a lot of resting. And, um, I cook really well, uh, you know, 95% of the time. And then sometimes it's like, yeah, we'll stop and grab a burger because I'm tired. I got a bunch of stuff going on and all that, but all that stopped because there's so much salt and everything. And on a healthy heart diet, you can only have like 15, um, milligrams of salt a day. And that adds up really quick. So no canned vegetables, you know, I'm cooking everything fresh and um, making my own spices <laughs> because if you, you know, if you already buy it pre-mixed, you know, like um, taco mix, there's a ton of salt in that. So I make my own. I'm laughing because I'm watching the squirrel out here. He's looking for his sugar water. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's funny. Um, but anyway, so, and he, he eats really well. He's whatever I put in front of him. He was raised that way. Um, he loves his salads and uh, all of his vegetables and all that. So anyway, that's, that's not a big deal. Um, and like I said, he's getting stronger every day. It's just kind of a slow process and the shock of that it happened, you know, all that sinking in and, um, 
you know, a little, little depression because it's like, you know, what if, when, what, what do we do now? And I mean, we, you know, he was in, in the ER and they were telling him all this stuff and he was like, I want to be buried here and I want this and make sure this happens. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, I mean, it was I mean, that serious. I mean, heart stuff is serious. And, you know, as a society, we are not a healthy society because of all the salt and all the preservatives and all the sugar and everything that gets put in everything. And I gripe about that a lot. And Keith is finally realizing that because he said something about, oh, such and such place has, ra you know, like a turkey wrap or something. And I'm like, no, the amount of salt. I said, don't you remember when McDonald's got in trouble because they put salt and sugar in their salads to make us crave them, want them? I mean, when you, something happens like this and you start looking at the labels and, and doing your research, it's, it's crazy. And, um, I, when AJ and I went on a trip, um, on our trip over New Year's and we went to, it was the world market in Nashville, I think it was. Um, and there were, you know, stuff from Italy, you know, stuff from all over the world, of course. And so I, got, I, I bought some pasta and some balsamic, um, some dressings anyway from Italy and I still had those and I was looking at them and I'm thinking wow because they don't allow over in Europe and stuff they don't allow all this crap that we put in our stuff in our foods the things that we consume they don't allow any of this stuff and if you knew what they put in energy drinks and all of that you would cringe and so all that stuff that I bought from Italy he can eat because there's like little to no sodium um, I mean, it's just phenomenal. So I told him today, I said, you know, I think I need to, um, fly over to Europe maybe once every six months and stock up on, on supplies. And he just laughed, said, yeah, you, you do that. <laughs> so anyway, um, so that's, what's been going on. And like I said, I know some of you know, um, and probably a lot of you don't, but I just wanted to let you know. And, um, Everything's good. Everything's going to be fine. It's just getting strong. I haven't been to work in a week, which is funny. And my daughter being home from school, we're actually getting some projects done. And we're, you know, staying close to home, of course. And um, anyway, we're, we have to keep looking at our phones to figure out what day it is because we don't, we don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the 411. That's the tea spillage. <laughs> as my daughter says, spill the tea. Um that's what's been going on. So, um, I just tell you that so you'll know what's going on. Um, maybe there'll be a little information for you. Uh, I don't know, but I just wanted to share that with you because I share, I think everything with you guys. Um, so I will sign off here. I'm going to do some more work around the house. I'm going to make some more videos and play with this wonderful stuff from Lisa. Try these pastes and these explosion color explosion powder. Very excited about that. Making some backgrounds and some mixed media stuff for junk journals. And um, get on these um, embossing folders and layering stencils. So until next time, bye for now.